How did your other son cope with all this? How did you help him cope with all this? He had a tough time at it, and and in some ways he, he you know, is still trying to fight through some of that. Um, you know, he was in third grade at the time. Um, well, he finished up second grade in Fairfield, and, and that took, um, from March to, to June, that took some coordination to um, get him to and yeah. from classes. Yeah. And my mom lives in Sydney a little more locally, and, and she was able to help with that quite a bit. Um, but he um, certainly saw his brother getting a ton of attention, and, you know, he wasn't getting yeah. all that attention, and, and that was tough for him, and, and to some extent, something that he's still... Um, trying to work through a little bit. So um, the um, Patrick Dempsey Center in Lewiston mm -hmm. offers um, free counseling for anybody going through cancer or anybody affected by cancer. And we utilize that service. Um, and he had a great counselor there that he still talks to from time to time um, to help him through some issues. Fabulous. So you, you drew on strong family networks. Yep. Uh, of course, healthcare providers are always so helpful, but, but then counseling services, some wraparound counseling services are really helpful for your son. Did you, as parents, tap counseling at all, or did you make it through okay with that? Um, you know, we've, we've utilized some of those services ourselves, yeah. Um, yeah. but, you know, I'm Personally, kind of, you know, the the uh, old school farm guy from Central Maine yeah. that's not um, <laughs> really ambitious to, to go seek out counseling. But it's certainly, it's, um, you know, it's great to have those services available uh -huh. when they're needed. Yeah. And, and they are needed from time to time. And counseling works when you want it and you're ready for it. Yeah. And if you've got other systems that work for you, then... You use those systems. It's clearly, family was extraordinarily helpful to yeah. you. Friends and family both, and, uh -huh. and we've got a large network of friends that stretch from Sugarloaf down through Central Maine to the Brunswick area, and th there's no words that can, you know, express how much they did for us during that yes. time. Um, whether it was financially, whether it was um, just to be there to offer a hug or to help with the children, or, or you know, whatever. Um, Along with that, once we were in the hospital, um, the Barbara Bush Children's Hospital has a dedicated staff called uh, Child Life Specialists, and they're amazing. Um, what they do for, for the um, patients there at the hospital and their siblings, and to some extent the parents, is, is amazing. They keep, you know, a, um, uh, a situation that is not happy they, they yeah. put the best spin on it yeah. that they can and, and really keep the kids engaged and, and not worried about their health so much a lot of arms That's wrapping right. around you huh yeah. and if how do you think it would have been if you if you didn't reach out and tap your family members and have that support network could you have done this alone i well first of all i couldn't have done it without my wife she was an amazing advocate for nathan um you know, she was a stay-at-home mom with um, some side jobs, but those all went to the side yeah, once, yeah. you know, once the diagnosis came in and, and she was, um, you know, absolutely integral in, in his entire um, medical plan mm -hmm. moving forward and, um, you know, keeping keeping us all together and, and moving towards that plan. Yeah. Um, I, I, I don't know how to answer that. I, uh, sure. I'm lucky that we didn't. <laughs> have that situation where we didn't have family yeah. and friends to rely yeah. on. Yeah. Um, it certainly would have been extremely difficult, if not sure. impossible, to, to get through um, without that. Yeah. And how's Nathan now? Uh, Nathan, <laughs> he's, he's excellent. Um, we're actually going in for um, another quarterly checkup, so four times a year. Um, we go in and, and he has a whole battery of tests done again, mm -hmm. um, one of which includes a pretty intensive MRI where they have to um, put him under anesthesia because wow. he's still young and, and they um, do about a two hour MRI which involves um, controlled breathing. Mm -hmm. And so they put a breathing tube in and, and control his breathing so they can get the right imaging. Um, so that's still, you know, something that um, it gets us worked up a little bit sure. coming into that because a you've got the anesthesia, um, and that's always 
the first thing that happens when we walk in is they give you this form and say that you realize that this, oh, this, and this All these happen. bad things can happen, yes. And after you've seen that form, you know, a couple hundred times now, <laughs> it's, it's kind of, you know, used to it. It's the same old stuff, but it's still, you know, when you hear someone saying those those things to mm -hmm. you and they're talking about your kid, yeah. um, it gets to you a little bit. And then there's the, the waiting period after the scans. You know, there's usually a day to two days turnaround, which isn't a long time, but... Yeah. When you're sitting on yeah. pins and needles waiting yeah. to know that everything's still clear yeah. and, and not hear any news in the opposite direction, that day and a half to two days can seem like an eternity.